And uh, let's move on with the insight and a little bit more for us to find out this time uh, about the Middle East. Uh, we're going to move to Saudi Arabia for our, our next uh, guest. Saudi Arabia's investments for education account for 8.8% of the country's GDP, which is the highest rate in the world. The government has gone to considerable efforts to increase girls' access to education and to reduce the gender gap at different educational levels. Today, we have a unique chance to get first-hand information about the latest education initiatives in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And to tell us more, I'd like to welcome on stage His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Al Issa, the Minister of Education from Saudi Arabia. Minister. Can we just check the microphone? Hello. Tell you what, use my microphone to get started. And we'll swap it out. Hello, good afternoon. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to be here among this group of distinguished speakers who have dedicated their careers to improving education and regions throughout the world. I suspect that we agree that the most valuable resource we have is the talent of our people. Yet, the full utilization of that capacity remains elusive for most of us. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been blessed with abundant natural riches that have enabled the country to develop quickly as a modern nation. Yet the dependence of this single resource has sustained narrowly focused economy. The extraction and exports of petroleum is not in itself sufficient to address the needs of a growing nation with broader possibilities. Our government has recognized this and launched an ambitious agenda outlined in Vision 2030, intended to create a diversified economy that will provide new opportunities for the next generation and create new possibilities for the future of our nation. This implies building knowledge-based economy. Education is key to the success of Vision 2030. Our current education system is a product of the past, not an enabler of the future. To prepare the next generation for a future that none of us can foresee, we will need to equip them not only with a broad base of knowledge, but with skills and competencies. A tradition of simply transmitting existing knowledge is no longer adequate. We need to rethink education from preschool through graduate schools, and we need to do this urgently. Already underway is an initiative by the National Transformation Program to reform and develop the K-12 curriculum. Alongside NTB, a series of measures that have been taken by the Ministry of Education to ensure the quality of the curriculum and all the parties involved in its development processes. The Ministry is guiding a transition from traditional education towards a competency-based curriculum. This transition implies a massive effort to, to reorient and support teachers whose role in the classroom will change dramatically. We do not underestimate the scope of this challenge. At this early stage, we are engaging with international partners, such as the National Association for the Education of Young Children in the United States to acquire additional expertise in early childhood development in order 
to design curriculum and standards appropriately. Just last month, a partnership agreement has been signed between the Kingdom's Ministry of Education and the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, effectively committing our two organizations to explore opportunities to further deepen cooperation on the design and implementation of educational reform in Saudi Arabia with a view of promoting stronger and more inclusive economic growth and development. We are also making important advances in the incorporation of digital learning, a strategy that will encourage more interactive learning through games, videos, and interactive textbooks. <coughs> This will help us fine-tune the technical skills of our children at an early age in an educational environment. By 2020, we hope to stop using printed textbooks. Of course, our, the world beyond our border is concerned with the, what they see in, as an inequities for girls in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are quickly opening up new opportunities for them. As only one example, we are introducing physical and health education for girls for the first time. And as I am sure you will all know, our women's universities and campuses are adding driver education courses to their offerings. Our society is changing. We also recognize the vital importance of improving vocational education. We are adding vocational education options at a secondary level. <coughs> at the secondary level, but not as a track of, uh, for underachieving under students, rather as an option and complement that, add, that adds manual and pre-professional skills acquisition to traditional academic tracks. The government has invested heavily in higher education during the last decade. Perhaps the most, visual, uh, the most visu uh, visible initiatives are the custodian of the two holy mosques scholarship program and the creation of King Abdullah University for Science and Technology, a world-class research university on the Red Sea. The scholarship program has been responsible for funding study abroad for tens of thousands of young Saudis who are returning home with undergraduate and graduate degrees from the world's best universities. At least 40% of the students sponsored for degrees abroad have been women. This program represents an enormous investment in the kingdom's future. It has equipped talented young Saudis with an excellent education. With an excellent education, international sophistications, and broad perspective, that will be a major contribution to the achievement of Vision 2030 goals. Our country is proud of our universities that appear in the international rankings, but we are not satisfied with this. We cannot only focus on our elite universities. We expect all of our universities to respond to the imperative for changes by ad, uh, adapting their programs of study and teaching methodologies to prepare graduates for a rapidly changing labor market. We, are, we recognize that all graduates will need high levels of technical competencies along with an ability to employ knowledge from a broad ra range of academic disciplines. Our young people will need to be capable of interdisciplinary analysis and reasoning. Traditional models of higher education do not address these critical objectives as well. Without the commitment of all our institutions, we cannot reach the goals of Vision 2030. Our labor market will need to adapt as well and move from being a consumer of university graduates to a partner in the educational enterprise by engaging with universities in new ways incorporating students as pre-graduation interns and collaborating with professors and students in research as only two examples. 
employers will also have to Im uh, an important role to, to, to play by integrating more women into the workforce at levels commensurate, commensurate with their talent and preparation. There remains much to be done, but the energy and commitment is there. Although change rarely comes easily to any society, it's already underway in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the future is looking quite promising. Finally, I would like to thank the organizing committee of this prestigious prize for inviting me to this event. I also would like to congratulate the winners of Eden Prize for their excellent accomplishment. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Al-Issa, Minister of Education for Saudi Arabia.